For this presentation, I decided to tackle the population crash in South Asian vultures, specifically in the regions of Nepal, India, and Pakistan. This ties into several issues that we have covered this semester in conservation biology here at Ohio University. Endangerment of a species, management of an ecosystem, local laws on conservation, and management of an endangered species. People don't tend to like carrion eating creatures. The general population believes that there is something about eating dead bodies that equates with something being evil or bad or dirty. It turns their stomach and that nauseated feeling gets projected onto the creatures that live on dead flesh. And many cultures have negative connotations and or superstitions regarding many of these species. This is unfortunate, especially because this means that when something bad happens to a carrion eating species, there's a lot more work to be done to inform the population about why they should want to save them. Multiple species of vultures are dying in terrifying numbers due to diclofenac, an anti-inflammatory given to livestock. Um, this has been a wake-up call to the South Asia environmentalists in areas where they have been disappearing. The decline started in the 1990s, but took a sudden increase in the early aughts to the point where more than half the species are now on the critically endangered list of the International Union for Conservation of Nature, or IUCN. Here we see a slender-billed vulture. And this is a beautiful long billed vulture. My favorite picture of all is this walking oriental white rumped vulture and the red headed vulture. Now, these are all critically endangered. Here we see the Indian vulture and Rappel's vulture. These are both in India and Pakistan and are also on the critically endangered list. The Egyptian vulture and Himalayan vulture are on the list as endangered. The Cinereus vulture, which I am not pronouncing correctly probably, and the bearded vulture are near threatened. And finally, there is the vulture of least concern the griffin vulture. When talking about these vultures dying, we are not talking about small numbers of decrease. 90% to 99.9% .9 of at least five species of vulture have died across Nepal, India, and Pakistan. And most of these decreases happened in a period of 12 years, from 1992 to 2004, with a further rapid, rapid increase and in decrease in the next three years. People might ask, why is this the major worry? The answer is because vultures play a vital role of carrion disposal in the ecosphere. Though this is not well known, because vultures help keep areas clear of dead and decaying bodies, they have become a very important part of the spiritual sky burial rites of the Parsi community. The decrease in vultures has caused the religious order to need to find alternative methods for their sky burials, including building expensive solar concentrators, which unfortunately due to weather issues do not work well. National Geographic noted deaths from rabies increased by nearly 50,000, which cost Indian society roughly 34 billion in mortality, treatment expenses, and lost wages. Vultures are an important part of ecosystems. I cannot emphasize that enough. They help decrease issues like disease and water pollution. According to Science Magazine, for instance, a wake of vultures can clear a cow's carcass within an hour. Without vultures, mammals, such as rats and wild dogs, um, 
they will eat the carrion instead. And because of this, spread pathogens like rabies that the vultures actually nullify in their gut. After testing multiple hypotheses that turned out to be incorrect, the cause of the epidemic was eventually, with much cooperation within the science and ecology community, resolved to be diclofenac. This anti-inflammatory, which is used by both humans and animals, causes massive renal failure within a short time of the specific species of vulture feeding on a carcass which has been treated with the drug. In fact, the study which discovered the toxicity in their 2004 announcement letter to Nature magazine, stated that their testing found diclofenac causes death within four to six days. It is so toxic to these species of vulture. Within four years of this discovery, diclofenac had been banned from use in the three countries suffering this near extinction of birds that once used to number in the tens of millions. Now, Though diclofenac was banned in 2006 in Nepal, India, and Pakistan, um, it was still being used on the black market uh, for treating animals, and they were even using humans' uh, version, the human version. And some of these vultures are at perilously low numbers. In India, for example, the oriental white-backed vulture population has dropped 99.9% .9 between 1992 and 2007. Now the World Wildlife Fund estimates that there are only 100 white-backed vultures in the Punjab. There are even fewer of some species. There are replacements to diclofenac. One alternative is meloxicam, but getting people to change is difficult. Looking at how to bring vultures back from the edge of extinction is no easy feat. There are several things that are being done and we can continue the work that is currently being done as well, expand upon it. We can invest in education, invest in breeding centers, create more vulture restaurants and expand the safe zones, pass stricter laws against uh, diclofenac usage, have more studies for alternatives for diclofenac for the veterinarians, and have better incentives to protect vultures in, our, in the local communities. The first and most important thing that is needed is education. This is a common refrain in conservation, the need to decrease ignorance and provide knowledge. A search that I did on the internet showed a recent attempt to have the information about this shocking near extinction of multiple species of vulture shared more. There are many web pages set up with excellent information. There uh, for instance, I found this image on DeviantArt. An artist submitted this piece to an endangered species art competition. There are now ecological tourism spots called vulture restaurants. <laughs> I really want to go to one. They provide dead animals that are tested and found to be safe for the vultures, and people can watch from behind blinds. They are inexpensive, a fee of 500 rupees or about $5, and are an excellent way to build goodwill for vultures and provide a reason for the communities to keep them safe. Trying to get more people involved is important. As a community-based conservation approach in Casa Ringa, the Corbett Foundation, TCF, identified seven villagers who have taken part in the effort to protect vulture note to protect vul vulture nest bearing trees in their farms and premises tcf presented each of these villagers with a certificate of appreciation and a bicycle honoring them as vulture sentinels this image is of some vulture breeders um, being visited by save asian Vultures from Extinction, otherwise known as SAVE. 
Um, and it's just a really nice picture of people that are part of SAVE and part of the breeding program that they're trying to instill. Now, veterinarians need alternatives, and they need to know why they need to protect against diseases. The vultures help keep from spreading. Educating veterinarians to safer alternatives is important. Unfortunately, it appears that there's more of a pushback against pharmaceutical companies who are doing their own pushback against current bans on their products. According to the IUCN's 2017 annual report on Asia, in 2016-2017, TCF distributed 665 meloxicam vials as an alternative to diclofenac in all areas of Kutch, Gujarat, to the local livestock inspectors who are the caregivers of local livestock. This is a picture of a person holding a box of meloxicam in Nepal. There has been a creation of safe zones in all three countries. These are areas where diclofenac has not only been banned from sale, but also where the people who might use it are monitored to make sure there is no such usage um, by people such as farmers, veterinarians, and pharmacists, as well as the livestock inspectors. There has also been a concerted effort to provide the vultures with safe diclofenac diclofenac-free cattle carcasses close to the breeding sites. This is an image of vultures feeding in 2009 in a snafe zone in the, I'm going to pronounce this incorrectly, Nawalparasi district of Nepal. In order to delve into this issue, I read multiple peer-reviewed studies. I read many, many studies actually including keeping up with several key ones that have been following this whole process. I also scanned, um, looked at a bunch of websites and articles that are devoted to saving the vultures. One side thing that I learned in this um, education is that ivory poachers in Africa account for one-third of the vulture deaths there. They poison the carcasses of the elephants so that the poachers are harder to track because the vultures will circle and this way they can't because they're dead. It's so horrific to me that two species are being targeted and that the poachers have no consideration for the bad effects of what they're doing. I can relate this to how in South Asia there are veterinarians and farmers who are still surreptitiously using diclofenac to treat livestock with no consideration about how they are destroying their very own ecosystem. I also want to stress that this pronounced head droop of uh, what a vulture looks like when it's poisoned is incredibly depressing and upsetting. This was a very intense research experience for me. And I hope that the information about how important vultures are to the ecosystem that I have shared with you and that the pictures of how beautiful these birds can be will provide you with incentive to help, either by educating others or by getting involved by donating to any of the conservation groups doing the heavy lifting. And I want to really thank you for your time.